All right, welcome to Mandy's Place. Uh, to our comedy kickoff. Let's hear it for, well, me. Okay. Come on, clap. Yeah, you guys like it. Woo! I'm probably the best comedian you guys are ever gonna see. Um, you guys like jokes, right? You guys like jokes? Yeah? Do you like being disappointed? Yes. All right, we're getting along just fine. Because I'm obviously not the best comedian ever. <laughs> I'm not Jewish or angry and black, so I can never be the best comedian ever. Um, <laughs> let me start off by telling you guys a little about me. My name's Mike Egan. I'm the host here at Manny's Place for the Comedy Kickoff. Um, when I'm not doing this, I, uh, I work as a personal support worker for people in wheelchairs. Let's give it a hand for my destiny. She can't clap. Yeah, there you go. She can't clap. Woo! Clap for her. You guys clap extra loud because she can't do it. Um, so that's what I do. I work with uh, people in wheelchairs. You know, like uh, I try to. Ex <laughs> I try to explain to my daughter that's one of the most manly things you can do is to look after other people that need your help. And uh, so she said to me, uh, well, what do you do? And I'm like, well, you know, I get her up in the morning, I give her a shower, I cook her breakfast, I brush her hair. So uh, you just play dollies, daddy. And I'm like, oh, that's like the least manly thing I can possibly do. Um, but uh, I don't know if you guys have a favorite cripple. Do you guys have a favorite cripple? Yeah. Forrest Gump? Yeah, he's a great cripple, isn't he? That motherfucker went all around the world doing crazy shit. My favorite is Stephen Hawking. Um, not because he's brilliant, uh, but because he's always so well dressed. You know, like he's got someone that really looks after him. As a personal sport worker, I'd strive to be that good. He's always wearing a suit, he's wearing a tie, he's looking good, he's got that gangsta lean. He's just like, yeah. <laughs> well, he can't move his hand, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Okay, tonight we got a great lineup of comedians for you guys tonight. It's gonna be awesome. We're starting off with a local kid. He's amazing. He's just starting out. So give him your love. His name's Dylan Scott. Took way too many drugs for doing this. <laughs> Meant that I didn't, it's not that I accidentally did drugs, it's just the too many part. That was a. And it was, uh, you got him spitting beer. And it was That's too. It was the fact that it was too many all at once. But I don't know I can handle that kind of thing at a, at a pace. Um, apparently, a banana is not a frill. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> telling a good solid dick joke is hard. Uh, women don't know how to take me, so they don't take me at all. Um, probably a dollar for every time. Check, check. If I had a dollar for every time uh, I thought about suicide, I'd have a gun. <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot of people don't believe in you when you try stuff. And uh, when, I when I decided to try comedy, there was a lot of naysayers. So I said to the one guy, I was like, you're such a naysayer. <laughs> You tell an aspiring race car driver to quit while he's ahead. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, check. Mike, something's wrong with this. Yeah, we got problems with the mic. Hey, somebody's gonna. Man, I'm working on it. <laughs> no, it, it's the cable. So, this. Um. Sometimes, uh. I get an erection in public, and it really hurts my penis. So what I do is I take my penis and I tuck it up like under my belt. 
and I really feel like I got away with something. <laughs> However, and sometimes, <laughs> you know, but but my 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 penis is doing like the John Cena, where it's like you can't see me. <laughs> Every single step I take, it's like you can't see me. And then uh, I walked ten paces and came. So. I have uh, bad luck with the ladies. I went up to a woman at a bar and I said, hi, my name's Dylan. She's like, so? I have a boyfriend. I was like, so? I have AIDS. <laughs> it's not that I don't find female comedians funny. It's just that I don't like hearing women talk. <laughs> You ever, uh, hit not, uh, I guess I'll say this for everybody. So, uh, sometimes I hit on women, and then when I find out they're a feminist, all I can think is, ugh. <laughs> and I get a similar feeling when I see a bumper sticker that says, it's not just a truck, it's an attitude. Yeah. Yeah. I once uh, ate an apple that was given to me by a homeless man and I woke up with a sore throat. <laughs> I, never, I never watched the documentary Blackfish. I simply didn't feel the need. He pissed off a killer whale and it killed some people. So I decided I'm going to make a pointless documentary nobody needs to watch. It'll be about dudes getting hit in the nuts. It'll just be a bunch of dudes getting interviewed going, damn, you know, you got me. Shit. It's a bummer. Oh, man. I live a pretty privileged life. Pretty much do whatever I want. And, uh... But I find myself with my hand on my penis in uncomfortable amount of hours per day. It's never a good time to come in my room. I find myself jerking off to weird shit sometimes. Like, I'll be watching How It's Made, and I'll just be like, damn. You know, I've always respected tricycles, and I've always wondered how they were made, actually. Rather piss on my shoe than be pretty sure I pissed on my shoe. No, nothing on that one. <laughs> All right, he's checking the reverb, whatever that is. Reverb. Yeah, reverb. Okay, reverb. I like <laughs> like like the reverb. That's like a that's like a guy that got busted again for a sexual offense. You're a reverb. You're not a prever. You're a reverb. <laughs> I don't know if you can get double on that list, but I wouldn't want it. Like, um, see, here's a little story I was gonna tell you. All right, um, last week, we were on our way to a show with a couple of friends. Uh, uh, the one girl I was driving down with, we're just driving down the street, old man drives past on a bicycle. She puts her finger out like this, right in front of my face as I'm driving. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you giving random old man the finger? She's like, no, that guy's a pervert. I'm like, what do you mean he was a pervert? I'm like, uh, he used to, she said, he used to stand in his doorway wearing a bra and panties and just stand there as the kids walk to school. <laughs> I'm like, I'm totally fine with that. That doesn't bother me. That's not the guy I'm worried about. He's putting his prevert right out there. You know, it's the guys that try to hide, right? It's, it's like your soccer coaches, your hockey coaches, your priests. You know, those are the guys I'm looking out for. It's not the registered sex offenders, it's the freelancers. Those are the ones. They're the problem. Right, like when I was a kid, we had a sex offender in my neighborhood. 
but we all knew not to go there. No one did, just, you know, gave a little birth around that house. And we didn't really bother him. He didn't go to his house on Halloween. He didn't do that. We knew who he was. Because he stood in his doorway wearing a bra and panties. I'm fine with that guy. That being said, I'm not on any list. So I would like to bring up the next comedian, the very funny girl all the way from Toronto. That's Toronto, folks. I don't know if you hillbillies ever been there. Yeah. But that's Toronto. You been there? Been. How many times you been from there? <laughs> Come on, tell I me. I went to college there. Come on, tell me. I went to college there. She went to college What did you take in college there? <laughs> Explosives. Explosives? <laughs> Bam! Yeah, because your shirt's exploding right now. Yeah, I can see where you did that, man. That's like Magnum PI to the max. Okay, our next comedian coming up. Very funny lady. Let's hear it for her. Amanda McQueen. Thanks, uh, I was just looking at the poster for this event. I don't know if anybody saw it, but it's the most misleading picture of me in the world. <laughs> I think I was like 18 or 19 when it was taken. It was a headshot. I have like long hair and swoopy bangs. I'm wearing like a polka dot shirt, just like laughing against a wall. <laughs> and I tell him like one of the guys from One Direction in a hot dog shirt. And they're like, oh no, I thought it would be booked. Uh, I think at the time I was, I was dressing to attract certain friends. I think I wanted to, I wanted to blend in with certain girls. And they're not, not dumb girls, but beautiful, really nice disoriented girls who make like the best best friends in the world you know like that like rom-com stereotype of a best friend who's like tough love and has tattoos and dark hair that's wrong that's not what I want I want like the the, the floaty fairy girl who's just gonna tell me I'm beautiful all the time you know I think my, my ideal best friend walked past me the other day on the sidewalk I was walking this way she was walking this way and she was floating along and her gum just flew out of her mouth and swirled around in the air and came back and smacked her in the face. And for her, it was like this awesome log ride. She was like, ah, ah. She's having like the best time. I'm like, take me with you. Um, I'm not one of those girls, but I am very, very rock and roll, as they say. And by that I don't mean like I play like a shitty tambourine on a tour bus and chug whiskey. I mean, there are circuits broken in my head <laughs> that are never going to be joined back together again, like ever. I don't know if, uh, if you guys have heard this statistic that men think of sex every five minutes or whatever, but I think that's bullshit because there wouldn't be so many accomplished men in the world if that were true, right? But I do have that, except with foods. So every five seconds, or every five minutes, my brain makes me think of a snack food. And much like an acid flashback, it happens at very inopportune times. The worst is when I'm just about to step up onto a bus and there's like maybe a bunch of kindergartners behind me for some reason and an old couple in front and a golden retriever trying to squeeze around me. <laughs> and then my brain is just like, egg roll. And in my imagination, I'm transported to this white room with a single table and chair and I'm just noshing away at an egg roll all by myself. And then when I snap back, the bus driver's like, ma'am, please take your hand off my shoulder. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, I can't really go out unsupervised either because of this. The other day I was buying a, a greeting card and I made my selection and walked up to the cash. And the cashier was wearing, I noticed this really cool denim jacket. She had the sleeves cut off and like some patches on it that she added herself. And instead of saying, nice jacket, and being on my way, my brain went like this. Denim jacket. I like denim jackets. I have a denim jacket. It's my favorite jacket. I'm not wearing my denim jacket right now. My jacket is gone. Someone stole my denim jacket right off my back! And I stomp my way home, just enraged that somebody would steal something from me so special and near and dear to my heart. I stomped into my bathroom and started rage washing my hands. And then I noticed that the denim jacket was draped this whole time across the towel rack with the bottom half just completely soaked for absolutely no reason. <laughs> I love that stuff. I love rage and I love 
unsolicited anger. I think it's hilarious. Um, my favorite thing at work, <laughs> yeah. I work in a small office, so I can hear a lot of what people say. And every three or four weeks, not every week, I get a little treat and a voice walks over to my desk. It's going, God damn it, I forgot how to spell Thursday again. It's always Thursday and always again. So that means that every few weeks she's like, thank God I figured out that Thursday. Crap, that was a doozy. T, Y, X, wait, damn it, it happened again. <laughs> um, I try to give myself treats at work. It's a little bit of a high stress environment. People, you know, can't spell and stuff. Um, one treat I like to get is dollar coffee at max. Doesn't cost a lot. And I like to force it down as if I'm enjoying myself. If you haven't tried it, the trademark of that stuff is that before you put liquid into the paper cup, it tastes like Metropolitan Zoo garbage. Like if you just sniff that cup, you're like, oh, it's not the coffee, it's the cup. And I pour brown liquid into it and I'm forcing it down and my feelings are like, no, we don't want this, don't make us. And this horrible conscience is like, force it down, it's a dollar. You're at work and you're treating yourself, act like it. So mean. <laughs> Not like a close neighbor, she lives down the hall of them, kind of a big apartment building, so like I know her, but we're not you know, close. So we just kind of acknowledged each other. And then she turned to me and, I, I mean, I don't know if I heard her properly, but she went, this is what I heard, you got a beard to deal with too? <laughs> and I'd already anticipated that she would say something clever and offhand, so I was already like, hey! And because my face was stuck like this, I didn't know what to do but go, yeah! <laughs> And she went, all right. And now, whether I misheard her or not, whether that's what she said or not, when I pass her in the halls now, she always winks at me. <laughs> so if there's anybody out there who's part of this secret, like, females with beards society or whatever it is that I'm involved with now, if you have any information, I'll be around. Thank you guys so much for listening. All right, let's hear from Amanda McQueen, everybody. That was fantastic. It uh, <laughs> makes me rethink shaving. Um, because, like, I, would, I, I think, like, I would, I, like, I've never made it as a shaved man, but as a bearded woman, I think I could do it. I think I could pull that off. You know, just get a little fat, grow some man boobs. Just pretend I'm a bearded woman, right? Hey, what about you? Would you pay uh, three bucks to see me in a, in a tent? Three bucks for what? To see me as a bearded woman in a tent. <laughs> really? Really? It's so great, yeah. I just saw you hitting on Bob there. Yeah, you, you get me? Me so good, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Anyways. I'm just a host here tonight. I'm not an actual comedian. I just play one on stage here tonight. Uh, by the way, I want to tell you about the explosive things. It was mining explosives. Oh, he did mining explosives. explosives. Mining explosives. Yeah, because that's different than regular yeah, like explosives. explosives. Yeah, because you don't nearly have a beard to be living in a shack <laughs> blowing shit up. And my guess with your alcohol intake, you don't have the uh, mandatory skills. But I really know my fucking explosives. Oh yeah, everyone knows explosives. They're called burritos after drinking all night. That's explosive. All right. Uh, Amanda was great. Uh, we got another great female comedian came up here tonight. Again, see, I got magic powers, right? Oh, man. That's great. I'm like an X-Men. All right, all right, here we go. Uh, our next comedian coming up, she's awesome. Let's hear it for Melanie Crawford. Me, if we could get that straight right off the top. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. 
All right, so yeah, my name's Melanie. I'm from Brantford, so that's this is exciting. Yeah, you all don't like this? There you go, that's better. No, no. Usually, you know place they hate people. Yeah, well then I'm in luck, because I'm far from fucking people. Uh, so usually I do comedy on Tuesday nights in Hamilton, so I am excited to be here, and I'm on a Saturday night, which is also kind of awesome, because, you know, I'm usually out anyways getting hammered, so it's good. I have, uh, I have an interesting life. I am uh, recently single. You can clap for that. Yeah. Recently single, which is awesome. The best thing about being single is all the fucking I get to do now because I didn't do that when I was married, uh. sadly. But I gotta tell you something. Now that I'm single, I'm getting hit on by a lot of guys and they're all fucking married. What's with that? Okay, I gotta tell you something. Anal sex is still cheating, guys. Okay? If you're married and you're coming on to me, anal sex is still cheating because I'll tell you what, you're not using my poop hole as a loop hole, okay? Not happening. He's like, me, but what about if I bought you a few drinks? <laughs> it's, it's comedy. I got a, I got a person in the front row that's about to need therapy. It's okay. It's all right. I have to go to a psychiatrist. Right after your sex offender meetings, right? <laughs> First and last name, Brantford. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you actually could tell this just by looking at me, but I am a woman. Oh, no shit. <laughs> no, no, no shit, yeah. And it's really hard to be a woman. I gotta tell you a few reasons that I have a hard time being a woman is one of them is I actually never know when I wake up in the morning if it's gonna be Eeyore or Tigger making my decisions that day. I have an issue with mood swings. Actually, I don't have an issue with it, but everyone around me has a fucking issue with it. I don't understand that. And the other thing about being a woman is that, you know, I like to make the rules. Have you heard that? Like, I have the vagina, therefore I make the rules, mm -hmm. right? So we can do shit to make it fair, like we can play rock, paper, scissors, but the bottom line is if, if I lose, we're going to change the game to rock, paper, scissors, throat punch, okay? <laughs> That's the game we're going to have to play, because I'm the woman. <laughs> oh, what else can I tell you about being a woman? Sometimes I have so much housework to do that I really can't figure out what movie to watch. That's a tough one. I'm also a mother of four. So, you know, clearly I had a hard time saying no. <laughs> Finally! Okay, he's recovered from the anal sex jokes. We got him back. I like you already. Good stuff. I've been up here for a while, so I made me work for it. It's alright, I can work hard. I'm a hard work working woman. My kids are alright, I like most of them. Some of them are a pain in the ass, and I have I have literally moved heaven and earth to, to childproof my house. But those crafty little fuckers are still getting in. <laughs> you know, uh, being a mom isn't so bad. I, I, I'm a firm believer in like outdoor play, right? I don't have all those gaming systems, and I don't have cable, and I don't have satellite. I believe the kids should be outside. A typical day at my house is a little bit like this. Kids, you can come in now. Mom's had her third drink. It's now safe to come in. Mornings are a bitch when you have four kids. I, I, I say I have four, like I gave birth to four. I could do the math on the number of pounds I have pushed through my vagina, but I won't. I'll save you the visual. And four kids, uh, three of them are five, four, and three in age. Yeah. <coughs> So I have some pity now. That's good. Oh, you want pity? Oh, yeah, this is right. Oh, fuck. Okay, security? <laughs> no, mornings are a real bitch, I gotta tell you, with those kids. Right? Sometimes getting out of the house is really difficult, right? Sometimes the fine line between safely buckling my kids into the truck to take them to school and putting my foot directly up their ass is just a cup of coffee. Sometimes that's all it is, right? That fine line is a cup of coffee. One day I thought I had the world by the balls. I thought, I'm going to fucking lick it. This morning I am going to make my coffee with Red Bull instead of water. Ah. I'll be damned. I was halfway to fucking Hamilton before I realized I forgot my truck. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun morning. <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, my text life. Okay? Text life. Because what's interesting about me, again, as a woman, and similar to, I, I think it was Amanda, that thing about the circuits that are never gonna work the, right, the same way, yeah, I have that. I have a lack of a filter, all right? So dating is fun. 
for, for someone who doesn't have a filter. So I'm pretty much gonna tell you exactly what I think. And it, it, can be, it can be all right, it can also be a little bit tricky, but when I get into texting people, which is how we do it now, right? We don't hardly meet face to face. When I get into texting people, it can be hard to decipher what I'm saying. But let me give you a couple hints, okay? If you get these kind of texts from me, this is what they mean. If I ever text you and tell you I'm going to see a lady about my pussy, it means I'm going to get my Brazilian done. Okay, fair enough. If I text you and tell you I'm going to go see a man about my pussy, it means I'm going to go show my Brazilian off. <laughs> All right? True story. <laughs> if I text you and tell you you're my favorite bitch, it means you are a, of an immediate benefit to me and I'm thankful for that. <laughs> and you're my favorite bitch. If I text you and tell you that I'll meet you there, it means I'm about to go home and change my goddamn mind to come up with a lie about why I can't come. <laughs> yeah, that's another true story. And if I text you and say I'm sorry I'm running late, it means I don't fucking want to go. True fucking story. <laughs> if I text you those things, be my friend anyways, because I'll come, I just want you to know I don't want to be there. <laughs> last but not late, if I text, uh, last but not least, if I text you and say good luck and take care, it means go fuck yourself and die. Okay? <laughs> Especially when it comes to dating. I'm not a girl that plays hard to get. If, if, I am, if it is here to see that I'm playing hard to get, I'm actually playing fuck off, you're ugly, I don't want you. <laughs> All right? I'm not gonna play hard to get. If you're hot, I'm into you. Guy, girl, doesn't matter. In fact, did we not make out last weekend? <laughs> what about what about this weekend? Yeah. Can we make out this weekend? Uh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's what I get every time. A couple more drinks. This microphone is like girls, and this is my dick. It just can't be around each other. <laughs> you stay over there, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that was great. Let's hear from Melanie, everybody. I still don't see you clapping. Oh, my God. Okay, we got one more comedian coming up here tonight. He's going to be awesome. All right, he's just getting his stuff ready up here. He's got his beer. He's got his napkin. He's got his burrito. He's good to go, right? I just want to tell you one quick story about how much I hate buskers. You guys like buskers? Yeah. Yeah, you guys like buskers? Do we have any buskers here tonight? Anyone, you guys buskers? All right, no one wanted to hear your shitty fucking music, all right? I'm not gonna give you a dollar because you play free power chords. Go fuck yourself, all right? Like, right, no one's really into it. Because you just, you just stand there and you're like, hey, give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. You guys fucking suck, all right? But the main reason I hate that and I'm pretty sure all the comedians here will agree with me. It's because as a comedian, I can't do that. I really can't just sit out in front of the liquor store and make fun of people and expect them to give me money. Right? I can't say, "Hey, buddy, hey, hey, hey wait a minute. you're like a, you're like Higgins and uh, fucking Magnum PI had a baby." I'm like, I don't really get what you're doing here. I do it's like, explosive, so why? why yeah, you're I explosive. Do you're explosive. I get it. Like, this guy over here, this fat guy wearing the Fit for Less shirt, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. <laughs> like, uh, the girl doing the videography tonight can't move her arms. What the fuck are we doing here tonight? So that's what I mean. I can't just stand out in front of the liquor store and be a buster because no one's going to give me it. like, put a dollar in the hat, bitches. These jokes ain't free. <laughs> All right, our next comedian coming up. Came all the way from Hamilton to see you guys tonight. No, I didn't. Ble no, he didn't? Kitchener. Came from Kitchener tonight. <laughs> all right, there you go. You Pretty sure he came from parts unknown, but hey, whatever. <laughs> you fucked up. I fucked up? <laughs> I fucked up? <laughs> so, so, like, what are you calling me, a pot? No. I'll call you a kettle. <laughs> <laughs> I <see>. All right. <laughs> Our next comedian, close enough tonight. Very funny man. Big Bob for Bob! Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Big Bopper. As always, it's a pleasure to come up here and perform for you guys. Please do not try to squint or adjust your eyes in any way, because I really am this big and sexy, okay? Yeah. This is my buddy Scotty right here. We do gymnastics together. We do some gymnastics together. You have not lived until you've seen me in a skin-tight white unitard, okay? 
They actually call it that too. I googled that shit. They call it that, man. I always thought a unitard was like a mongoloid boy on a one-wheeled bicycle. <laughs> That's terrible. I should never talk that way. Oh, man. I'm probably what it would look like if Stone Cold Steve Austin and Bam Bam Bigelow had a love child. Oh, yeah. I knew I was getting fat when I sat on the toilet and my love handles were touching the porcelain. That's never a good thing, man. Just last week, I bent over to clip my toenails. I passed right the fuck out, bro. It was crazy shit. One second I was on that pinky toenail, the next second I woke up. Last week in the mall, a little boy came up to me, pointed at my belly. He said, hey, mister, are you pregnant? And I, st I always play the role, right? So I started rubbing a little bit. I was like, well, yes, I am there, little fella. And it's going to be a wee baby elephant because I felt his trunk this morning. That's what I realized. Probably not a good idea to feel your trunk in front of small children at the mall, you know? That's how your house becomes a red dot on the map, okay? <laughs> my dad's no help either. I gotta tell you, my dad's no help. He's like a goddamn fitness guru. He runs half an hour on the treadmill every morning, barely breaks a sweat. I get totally exhausted just toweling off after a shower. In my defense, though, like, hey, it's a lot of toweling, okay? <laughs> And not only am I fat, but I'm furry. Have you ever tried to towel off of a woolly mammoth straight out of the lake? It's not a, it's a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of hard work. Being a big guy, you know I like the big ladies too. I like ladies to can challenge me in a chicken wing eating contest, you know? Oh yeah. I like girls so big, even my black friends are like, God damn, Baba, that's a big bitch you got right there, boy. <laughs> Lately I've been dating the big black girls because I gotta get the brothers back. They've been stealing my fat white chicks for many years now. Many years. <laughs> oh man, I had a dream last night. I smoked myself to sleep. It's a regular Friday night thing for me. I had a dream that I was the guest host on Sesame Street. <laughs> oh yeah, man. I came to find out the whole place was infested with marijuana. Oscar was selling it out of the garbage can. Big Bird was the lookout up on the rooftops. Fucking Elmo was the runner boy out on the corner. And Elmo was the supreme roller man. Elmo never creased the paper once in his life. And he always started off the Sesame Street Smoke Fest. <laughs> Elmo like Mary Jane. Ooh, Elmo like Mary Jane. Elmo passed it off to the count. The count said, one pup. <laughs> Two pups. Three pups. Four. Twenty. Ah, 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 ah. The count passed it off to Bert and Ernie sitting in the tub. Ernie grabbed it. Ernie always grabbed it right away. He tried to hide it from Bert, you know? Hey, Bert. Hey, Bert. No way, no butt for you, Bert. Hey, Bert. Hey, Bert. How many wieners in the tub, Bert? <laughs> Ernie passed it off to the Cookie Monster. The Cookie Monster said, See, it's for cannibals. It's good enough for me. <laughs> then other characters just started coming in out of nowhere, you know? Yogi Bear walked in the room. Hey, what do you say there about her? Do you want to have a pot picnic? <laughs> My favorite of all time, the Swedish chef from the Muppets was sitting there already rolling another one. <laughs> Last but not least, the potheads for life. Shaggy and Scooby walked in the room. Shaggy grabbed it right away. Like, like who's your best? Like who's your best friend in the world, Scoob? Oh, you are Shaggy. <laughs> that was the Sesame Street Smoke Fest, people. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me get a little drink here. I'll try a few more impressions for you. People like the impressions. Uh, you don't see a lot of guys fucking around with impressions because it's very difficult. It's either going to go decent or it's going to go fucking terrible, okay? I've been working on a few. It's a lot of weed smoking, a lot of YouTube watching, you know what I mean? I'll try a little uh, Mike Tyson circa 2001. Lennox, I'm coming for you. 
nah, I didn't even train for this fight. Maybe, maybe I trained like two weeks for this fight because I'm the most brutal, vicious, and the most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one, there's no one can match me. My style is impetuous. And my defense is impregnable, and I'm just ferocious. I want to rip his heart, and I'm going to bite his heels off. All pay be to Allah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. We already had a Forrest Gump reference. Let me try a little Forrest Gump, circa 1994. <sighs> Elvis Sants Bubba died. The bopper has been my best good friend. <laughs> Nice. He bought me these new shoes. <laughs> Bopper said they was my magic shoes. <laughs> and my other friend, Lou Tyler Diane, he taught me all about cunnilingus. <laughs> he, he said I need to use my fingers more with my tongue, but I didn't know nothing about that. <laughs> Framper, I may not be a smart man, but at least now I know how to eat a good pussy. <laughs> that was awesome. We'll try a few of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Let's go for uh, Macho Man Randy Savage, The Ultimate Warrior, and Hulk Hogan. This is the place, freak out, freak out, ooh, yeah, dig it. Big Bopper, I just want to know right now, do you feel the electricity going through your veins? Just standing this close to the macho man, Elizabeth, down that aisle, ooh, yeah. I was sitting here in a time capsule from a land far away to destroy you, Hulk Hogan. Ah, load the spaceship with the rocket fuel, load it with the warrior! Cocaine's a hell of a drug, man. They were all on it. They were all on it. They were all on it. Even the immortal Hulk Hogan. Well, you know something, Bopper, brother. I like the way you get up on stage. Have fun with the voices, dude. If you train, say your prayers and take your vitamins. I know you're gonna rock that microphone. What are they gonna think when the largest love handles in the world take the stage? Buffer mania starts running wild and the whole world shakes at your feet, brother. Woo! I wish I had a... I wish I had an oxygen mask up here. I'm, I should end on Hogan because I feel like I'm going to fucking pass out right now. <laughs> Just give me one second. Yeah. All right, so we know I'm a big fat bastard. We know I love wrestling. I can do a few impressions. I'm going to give you 10 more little fun facts about who the bopper actually is. I'm going to go ahead. I'll try to do it all in one breath for you, okay? Listen close, because this is amazing. <laughs> my real name is Bob Seifert. I'm 37 years old. I live in Kitchener, Ontario. I've never been married, never had any kids. I don't listen to rules, regulations. I turn my nose up to authority. I've been fired from every job I've ever had in my life, but i got more addictions than you can shake a stick at. Woo! <laughs> Other than that, my life is picture perfect. <laughs> and I can see by the look on some of your faces, some of you are probably thinking, this big crazy bastard is living in his parents' basement. <laughs> but that's where you're wrong, people. Dead wrong. Because I live on the main floor, okay? I live on the main floor. I ain't no basement dwelling freak show. Let's not get it twisted. I had a rough adolescence. I grew up with a sister that was just better than me at everything, you know? She was smarter than me, better looking than me, a better athlete than me far more responsible than me, and in a very cruel twist of fate, she got more chicks than me, Bradford. Oh, God. <laughs> Terrible, man. You don't even know what pain is until your sister steals one of your girlfriends, okay? That's when the drugs came for a visit. Talk about addictions. People are always trying to get rid of their addictions. I say, Pile on more addictions, man. The more addictions you have in this lifetime, the more alive you are. Just look how boisterous and vibrant I am. 
<laughs> Whew, I'm working on about seven or eight. I will smoke anything you fucking put on the table, bro. It don't matter to me, man. But I'm broke, so all I can afford is the marijuana. Yeah, just a big pothead. Before I started smoking weed, I was 192 pounds, Brantford. 192 pounds. Of course, I was 12 years old at the time, you know? 12 years old at the time. <laughs> In my little montage there, I talked about driving crazy. I am a fucking maniac behind the wheel. I'm a total fucking lunatic. I'm a bobber and a weaver, a mover and a shaker. And, and I do it all in a 2002 Pontiac, Montana. <laughs> I call her Hannah Montana because that bitch likes to be driven hard. You know what I'm saying? You feeling me? And she corners like she's on rails, man. Woo! Last week, I got her up to 160 on the 401. That rear axle started twerking a little. That fucking rear axle was twerking, man. Hannah Montana was twerking. Let me leave you guys with this. So I want to ask you guys a question about little Hannah Montana there, little Miley Cyrus. Why is it that she can roll around naked licking a sledgehammer in her videos? They call that music. They call it art. But when I did it, they just called me a drunk and kicked me out of the Home Depot. <laughs> Thank you guys, I am the Big Bopper. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. We're gonna do it again real soon, baby. Real soon. <laughs> Can I hear from the Big Bopper? Over here! Over here! Over here! Still not clapping, eh? You fucking <laughs> Alright, that's our show for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to support local comedy, support comedy of all kinds. Thank you for Manny's Place. Can we get a hand for Manny's Place? Yeah. I lost my And that's our show. Thank you very much.